Nicholas Smith. I'm a healthcare studies major with a business administration minor, and I spent the summer working at Washington, D working in Washington D.C. in the office of Congressman Jim Cooper. Well, first of all, I would like to do my acknowledgments first, and I of course would like to thank uh, Dr. Burhan and his family for the lovely support that they gave me. I would also like to thank Cassie and Heather Ashton uh, for all of their. Um, emotional support and, and things like that. Mm -hmm. Dr. Mays, my faculty member, and then my congressman, doc, uh, doctor, oh, if, um, Jim Cooper and his staff, especially Miranda McDonald, who is my site supervisor and staff assistant, and of course my family and parents for supporting me during this internship. So first I would like to talk a little bit about who Jim Cooper is, and then I would like to go about talk into uh, what I did with my internship, and then finish with my, uh, with my uh, research project. So Jim Cooper, he represents the District of Tennessee, which is Nashville, Tennessee, which is my hometown, and that is why I decided to intern for him. He's been there for a long time, ever since the 80s. He actually served a different district, the fourth district before that. He took a sh short recession after he lost the Senate seat and came back in 2003, serving Nashville and the greater area. He's been serving there ever since. The reason why I love him is that he is a He's a Democrat in a red state, and he is a part of the Blue Dog Coalition, which is unfortunately a dying breed ever since the ACA. Um, there's not that many of them anymore, but it's, it's filled with people who are willing to work across aisles. They're really partisan focused. They're more, um, more fiscally a conservative, but they still are Democrats, and they're working to get things done that they know will benefit the greater good of America versus just trying to do what is best for their own career and what's best for their own party. So I really I really could work for somebody I could respect and I enjoyed working with everybody that uh, who's working for him as well. He's also part of the Oversight and Government Reform Committee and then he also does a lot with, with the Department of Defense. So what did I do? This is a little bit of a I don't know, a loud collage, if you will, over what my internship was, which basically was just that. It was a, it was a mix of everything. It was a mosaic of what it would be like to be on the Hill a, with a career. I did everything from um, every single day that Jim was in the office. We called him Jim, that's why I called him Jim. Uh, we would meet with him, the interns, there was 10 of us, for an hour every single day discussing the news of the day. We would debate our opinions. He would yell at us and say that we needed to be more formed, and it really pushed us. <laughs> <laughs> he was very kind. And uh, we wrote a daily writing samples that he meticulously critiqued himself. So it's a very hands on internship in regards to my congressman. We, of course, had the everyday duties like talking to constituents. I gave tours to people who would come to the Capitol. Uh, we met with all, uh, everyone from former staffers to lobbyists that they had connections with to kind of get to know the Center of Washington, D.C., and learn more about how things get done on the Hill. We went to different briefings and hearings. I performed congressional research for different staffers and wrote memos. I went to this wonderful lecture series that they had where I got to meet with like, a speaker or former speaker, John Boehner, and Congressman John Lewis, who is an amazing civil rights activist. He's the one behind Selma, if you know what that is. And that was, that was really inspirational to um, to learn from him, to track hard from Meet the Press, to Kevin McCarthy, current senator, Senate Majority Leader. Uh, it was also an exciting time to be in D.C. There was everything from the Trade Bill to the Patriot Act to the shooting in Charleston, which inspired debates about the Confederate flag, which was very interesting uh, to, to be there from someone from Tennessee. We get a lot of calls about that. Um, to gay marriage, to the passing, or the to the King Deeper Well. And actually, this is that photo in the corner. Um, I was I was able to be on the Supreme Court steps the day that gay marriage was passed, and the day that King Deeper Well was announced. And that I'm in that picture, and that was on my computer, and that was very interesting. To me. Yeah. So it was great. Um, so what happened after or during my internship is that. I became a little bit more interested about this whole King B. Burwell case. What was it about? I got so many questions about it. I was a healthcare intern. Uh, so I, I really wanted to know a little bit more about it. And basically what happened is that the states that had not set up their own exchanges, which is basically just a healthcare marketplace where you can go and buy insurance, those that had not set those up, uh, King B. Burwell was challenging whether or not those states, could, the people in those states could still receive IRS tax subsidies to go buy their own insurance on the federally set up uh, exchange um, so that they can still buy insurance. 
it's very confusing, the ACA is very confusing, and essentially it, it did not go through, the plaintiff lost, and those people, like Tennessee, could still, uh, could still buy insurance on the federal marketplace. So I wanted to learn a little bit more as to why did Tennessee not have its own state exchange? Why did they not expand Medicaid? What were the effects of that on the Tennessee population? Was, that, was it good? I had come from a very conservative background from Tennessee, and I'd always been taught that expanding Medicaid was awful, and that um, it would raise premiums, and that wouldn't be good for the general population. And so I wanted to know, was that true? Was that good, or is that something that I had just been taught to believe um, that was actually hurting those people who needed health care the most? So what I did to look um, into the policies of Tennessee healthcare uh, regarding Medicaid is I wanted to compare it to another state, a state that had very similar, uh, very, very similar culture, very similar um, people, uh, very close proximity, but had done something different. And that state was, ten, uh, was Kentucky, as you can see that I compared to Kentucky. Uh, and so Kentucky and Tennessee are part of something that's called the Upland South region, which is all that region that is highlighted in green. So they're very, very similar culturally, but Kentucky did something very different from other southern states. They decided to expand Medicaid. They decided to uh, create their own uh, our state, state exchange as well. And I want you to know what was the impact of that, and was that something that Tennessee could try to emulate? Uh, so, and those are all the different states that have decided to pass Medicaid, not pass Medicaid, and you see most of the states that have not are in the South, and a lot of that is due to political beliefs. Uh, so this is, a, um, this is a slide that's kind of showing how Kentucky and Tennessee are very similar in regards to health care. Um, the South is not, it's not doing too well. Poor, poor South. Um, <laughs> we're, having some, we're having some issues over here. This is obesity rates, of others teen birth rates, you have smoking rates. Um, and you can see that the South is, is the worst um, of, of the other regions, unfortunately. And that's, <coughs> that's really hard for me to say because I'm someone who adores the South. Um, Kentucky themselves, they were 50th in smoking. They were 49th in cardiac or heart disease. They were 40th in obesity. So they were, they were really struggling as well. It wasn't just Tennessee. But what did they do? So that is Governor, um, Governor Bashir, I believe I'm pronouncing that correctly. And he stood up to what other uh, southern legislatures were doing, and he said, no, we're going we're gonna to expand Medicaid, this is what we're going to do. And so he set up something called kind, uh, Connect, um, which is the Kentucky version of the state exchange. And he argued that this would lead to economic growth, this would create jobs, um, this would lower the coverage gap, um, which is essentially the group of people who, after the ACA, were too poor to receive Medicaid, but were too are too rich to receive Medicaid, but too poor to receive those subsidies. And so that group of people called the coverage gap were supposed to be um, given ex that expanded Medicaid to, um, because the state was supposed <coughs> to give more funding to Medicaid. Um, so he decided that he wanted to reduce that coverage gap. Um, and so he did. And uh, so he did that in 2013. And since then, the uninsured rate in Kentucky has reduced by 56%. That's 20.4% to 9% since 2013. And that compares around 20% decrease in the other states that have not decided to expand Medicaid. It has also led to economic growth. It's created 12,000 healthcare-related jobs. It has decreased unemployment significantly. And it has added $30 billion of a positive impact on Kentucky economy, both during, uh, due to the legislation and uh, all the people involved in this. Um, and they also decided the, reason, the main reason why they weren't going to do this is because not expanding would actually hurt the economy because all that money, all these taxpayers are still having to pay federal taxes. Uh, and instead of that money going back into Kentucky um, via the federal government giving them um, giving the money um, through this Medicaid match program, instead they would be paying all this taxpayer money and would go to the states that had expanded Medicaid, like New York or California but not to its own citizens. So he decided he was going to do that, and it proved successful. But what did Tennessee do? Tennessee has not extended Medicaid. In fact, in 1994, they tried to attempt to have their own Medicaid uh, policy, something called TINCARE, which is where they would uh, put all of their Medicaid enrollees into this managed care program. And it still exists today, but it's widely unsuccessful. They also tried to do something recently called Insure Tennessee as their own like, fix 
they're not passing a, a state Medicaid expansion. Um, and that has also been unsuccessful. It did not pass. We have a very, very conservative legislature in Tennessee, and uh, they would not let that pass. And so right now, we're kind of fumbling around with the issue. What do we do with this coverage gap? What do we do with this population of people who are undeserved? How can we fix it? And I propose that we look to what Kentucky did and decide to expand that gate. Thank you.